All right, so I'm Garrett Moore, and for my creative nonfiction piece, I'm going to talk about how the Cavaliers changed Cleveland with their championship. And obviously, for a creative nonfiction piece, you have to have a surface topic and a deeper meaning. Uh, the surface topic is that the Cavaliers won a championship and ended a 52-year title draw for the city of Cleveland. And the deeper meaning is it brought a city together that was really suffering and always been down on hard times. So the story is, they've had a pretty bad story. As you can see, I have a movie poster from the Believeland, uh, 30 for 30 by ESPN. And all the stuff in great fonts, all the failures they've had in their sports. and. I would go through them all, but I don't have time. It would probably take up the entire class and then some. So I'll just show a video that says there's always next year, which is basically the Cleveland motto, because we never seem to win. And in Cleveland, we... And in Cleveland, we title our heartbreaks. I know, I've learned that from you. Yeah. And it was January of 87 to drive. Broncos defeat the Browns, AFC Championship game. Oh, the crowd's popular now. We're, 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 we're getting out here. The Browns led by 7, 532 left in the fourth. John Elway led the Broncos 98 yards to tie it. And then they won in overtime. Yeah, and then of course there was the fumble the very next year. Broncos beat the Browns in the AFC Championship game again. This was just to get to the Super Bowl. Trailing by a touchdown, a buck 12 to go. Ernest Biner on his way to the end zone to tie it. Stripped of the ball at the three. He fumbled, and, and that was the end of that. Okay, the two and more, 89, the shot. Bulls beat the Cavs, game five in the Eastern Conference first round. Cavs led the Bulls by one after Craig Elo scored on a driving layup to take the lead with three seconds to play. Following timeout, Jordan, the inbound pass, and hit the shot over Elo to buzzer. And then, how about this? I was in the building this night. The blown save. The Indians led the Marlins 2-1, going into the ninth inning. Jose Mesa had been so good all year. But he blows the save opportunity. It goes to 11 innings. There was a Tony Fernandez error at second. That was a nightmare. The Marlins won game seven of the World Series in extra innings. It's gonna, it's gonna, so as you can see, there's a... Let me start over. As you can see... It's playing again. Yeah, you do? Yeah. Yeah. In life, if you're gonna talk with Tom, you always have to and in Cleveland wheat. As you can see, there's a big story past of failures. I didn't even get to them all. But that just shows the sports failures. I think it's important to see how the fans act after this after all these failures. So I have a video of a of a Browns fan reacting after another loss. They lost 30-11 to to the Houston Texans a few years ago. And this guy was just a little upset there. He, he says one curse word, so I'll just figure I should warn everyone about that. Hey Browns, Mike Polk, season ticket holder. Killer game in Houston today. Well, thank God we built you. What a blessing for the community. You are wasting valuable space on our majestic shoreline, and what do we get out of it from you? Ten miserable games a year, including two preseason games that I have to pay for, and one shitty King and Chesney concert. Do you understand that it's actually statistically harder for a team to be this consistently bad than it is for them to occasionally accidentally be good? <laughs> the probability is staggering. Did you happen to see that Packers-Chargers game today? It's like they're playing a different sport than you are. And here's what you have to understand. We don't even expect you to be good. We just want you to be watchable. Do you have any idea how low our expectations are? We don't expect you to win the Super Bowl. We just want you to look better than a Division III high school team. <laughs> important things in life than football, but you are supposed to get a pleasant distraction from those things. But all we do is pay you money to put us in a bad mood every week. <laughs> you are a factory of sadness! <laughs> I'll see you Sunday. <laughs> So as you can see, it's funny, but he was obviously frustrated. And if you've ever been to a Browns gamer in Cleveland during one of their losses, it's like that almost every every Sunday afternoon. And then it all changed this year. The Cavs won the championship. And of course, they did it in dramatic fashion like most Cleveland's known to do. They made sure your heart was in your throat and you thought you were going to lose it all and have your heart ripped out again. 
but I have a quote here from Bleacher Report that just kind of summarizes everything that happened. It says, when the final buzzer sounded at Oracle Arena in Oakland, California, following their 93-89 victory over the Golden State Warriors in Game 7 of the Finals on Sunday, the Cleveland Cavaliers officially became the first team to overcome a 3-1 to series deficit in the Finals, also becoming just the fourth team to come back from a 2 nothing deficit. So, as you can see, it was a very special time. No one's ever done that before. So, it was just something that the Cleveland fans deserved. And my first main point is that it took a lot of pressure off the community. Now, as you can see, this is from the parade. Uh, there was 1.3 million people at the parade, so, yes, yeah, he was there. And uh, it just, it brought, it took a nice dark cloud off the city. Everything felt better, even though the game ended at almost midnight. It felt like a sunny day, because I was in downtown Cleveland. And I have a... Uh, a quote from Ernest Biner, he's the running back that fumbled the ball in the video. He said, there was definitely a sense of peace that came over me, a sense of like it's over. The fumble, the drive, all of that's part of our story, but it's not the story. And then uh, I have another quote from Tony Rizzo, he's a sports radio guy up in Cleveland. He said, the pressure is off, the curse is over, this is maybe one of the greatest weeks in the history of the city. So as you can see, it was something that weighed heavily on them, and it gave them something to attach themselves to to say we're winners, and finally not be the butt of every joke on social media. And then uh, another, my second point is that it united the region, and uh, I have pictures because I was actually in the queue for game seven, and then outside thereafter. I, I just put these here so I can like, have reason to tell you the story that after they won, I high five people I never knew, hug people I never know. <laughs> I just you hug everyone you can, sit, high five everyone, celebrate, scream, anything. There's people crying in the streets. There's people climbing buildings. It was the most hectic party I've ever seen. <laughs> and there was about a million people in downtown, and it was the first time I've ever been down there where there was a million people, and I felt safe. <laughs> everyone was just their be everyone's best friend that day. It was really just a magical moment. And then another quote from Tony Rizzo, nothing has brought Northeast Ohio together like this Cavaliers championship. Like, the Cavs didn't just win it for the 15 players on the team, they won it for an entire region. And uh, as you can see, that's a lot of pressure, so winning it uh, took the pressure right off of them. And then in conclusion, sports are just the quickest way to unify a group of people, as you can see by the picture of people partying up after the game. Uh, no matter what sport it is, it, if, if something good happens, you're going to celebrate with the person next to you, even if you hate their guts. If the Browns score a touchdown here at the Browns game, you're going to high-five the person next to you. If you're at the Indians game they hit a home run, you're going to high-five. It could be a high school game, you're going to celebrate with the people next to you. Soccer, hockey, anything. It doesn't even have to be pro sports. So and then I'd like to close with a, a video of just people celebrating after the, the Cavs uh, championship to really just kind of bring it all together and show how happy of a time it was.
So obviously that 20,000 people in that arena just became best friends and I was in the arena and it was probably the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life. I actually drove up from Florida that day to make it to game seven at the queue. And then I didn't get home till 3 a.m. because it took three hours to get out of the city, even when you were already in your car. And then I got up again for work at 6 a.m. and it was totally worth it. I got to see something historic and see a, a, a city that's always been the butt of every joke and sad all the time to be happy for once. And I've never seen Cleveland that electric before in my life. And you got sources.